what do you think about President Trump? I, you know, I've, I've been a look. I never voted ever in any election in my life, even though I've been a citizen since 1983. When Trump ran, I voted for him, and I was even surprised I did because I saw within him a disruptor. And you know, I'm a systems guy. You know, a lot of my books are on systems theory. So if you have a system that's moving in a certain vibration, and then someone comes along and hits it really hard, <laughs> you have the opportunity to take that system from here to here. And that's what Trump did. He was like a bulldozer who completely disrupted the left and right or Republicans and Democrats. That's when I registered as an independent. I voted for him. So he was a necessary disruption. I would never have thought about running in electoral politics. But when he ran is when I decided to run against Warren. And I, we're the ones who forced Warren to take the DNA test. We're the ones who destroyed her chances of being president. And the reason, so when it comes back to Trump, Trump came in. Um, and he disrupted this whole thing. He has awakened people to the whole concept of fake news, right? That's a very, very positive thing. He has created enough uh, acidity for the establishment. That's a good thing, okay? Um, he has made people question things. He has created a divisiveness, which I think is a good thing. Everyone says, oh, we need to unite the country. No, united with who? Because what you've seen is you've seen the parting of the establishment and the, the not so obvious establishment on one side and over here of everyday working people who are saying, wait a minute, we deserve something better. And I think that's all a good thing. And I think everyday working people, um, uh, you know, when I talk about working people, I'm talking about people actually have skills who get up in the morning and work, not um, this other set of fake working people, people are lumpens, people live off welfare, which is what the fake left supports. So Trump is, I think, awakened this and he's created in a very good way, a good divisiveness. I think it's good. Would you vote for, or are you gonna vote for him in 2020? And what do you think of the job he's done? Cause I didn't vote for him. I didn't understand it fully at the time, but uh, now I really support him for exactly what you said. He switched it up military wise, TV wise, uh, go ahead. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll support Trump again because, look, when you look what's going on, here's a guy who every day is making hell for the establishment. That's a good thing, man. I don't care if he's throwing stuff at them all day long. I don't care, fact, frankly, if he doesn't pass one bill because we've never had someone like him on a national stage keep hitting at them hard, you know, hitting Romney, hitting the left and the right the fake left and the fake right, which I like to call them, you know? Um, I, don't even, I don't even care if he passes one bill because in the, in the 20 years, since 1981, since I've been following American politics, right when someone gets to that national stage, they always compromise, they become diplomatic. The fact that he's doing that is something that's necessary because what's that's doing, it's gonna create a whole new wave of people who wanna enter politics. Everyone talks politics now, that's a good thing. So my, I have a very different view on this because I'm a systems guy. I see systems moving like this, and I see the opportunity to take it to a different system. And it's a, it, he's created almost like a window in the space-time continuum where people like me want to get involved in politics. That's a good thing. I agree. And you remind me of him in the sense you're highly ambitious. Like I feel like he gets more done in a week. You said, I don't care if he passes a bill or not. But it seems like he is doing a lot from prison reform, which the yes, left only said exactly. they would do. From military right. industrial, he's not the be all end all anti war guy, but he did switch it up in Syria and said, Who are these people? Stop funding them, got rid of terrorists, said he would do it and did it. Are you impressed with what he's getting done besides just his systems? Oh, kind of what I'm saying, all those things are icing on the cake, right? Because he keeps fighting. So, what he did with criminal justice reform, what he did, um, you know, with uh, saying he's going to get out of Syria, um, he's done a lot of things for small businesses to eliminate all these ridiculous regulations. That, these are all very, very good things. And, but I'm saying in the, the, the bigger thing he's done is rattle their cages, right? Which has created a wave that um, they know that their power is not always, and by the way, Republicans and Democrats work together. Trump was a Democrat, he hijacked the Republican party, right? Let's not forget both of these parties are part of the deep state, both of them, you know? The, the Democrats in Massachusetts, it's the Democrat and the Republicans swirl around them, right? So when I'm running, what I realized is we ran as independents. We got 100,000 votes and they didn't put me on the debate stage. 
If I'd been on the debate stage, I would have gotten a half a million votes. About 20 years ago, an independent grant was polling at less than 1%. They put him on the debate stage. And the last time a U.S. senator ran as an independent, he only got 20,000 votes. But they're really afraid of a super genius guy like me. All right? <laughs> they want, no, I say that with all humility. They, they want dopes who they can control. They don't want a guy who invented email. They don't want a guy who's got four degrees. They don't want a guy who goes against Monsanto. They don't want a guy, you know, uh, who's good looking, who's smart, who can say it all. They want idiots. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to run as go right. So the, if you think about it, the Democrats and Republicans are one. The Republican Party doesn't believe in meritocracy because they basically shill the Democrats. So we're going to probably run as Democrats, go right in and primary the current, current senator. And we're going to expose them. And they're, the Democrats are actually the party of war. They're actually the party of racism. They're actually the party of pollution, right? We want to hit them to expose the hypocrisy of that. That's why when we said only the real Indian can defeat the fake Indian, it wasn't just about Elizabeth Warren. It's about the fact that all of these politicians are puppets. And that's why they're so afraid of me. If I'd been on that debate stage anomaly, we would have won, man. Because people would have said, holy shit, look at this guy. He's a real thing. He did invent email. You know, he does, you know, he, look, I'm the only guy, you know, I don't need to do this, man. I could be, I, I made a lot of money. I've got all my degrees. I've got all my prestige. I've gotten a lot of fame. I've got fortune. And the only reason I'm doing this is because in 1977, I made a promise to my grandparents who were poor village farmers and a promise to my high school teachers that I would use all of my education to fight to create a better world. That's the only reason I'm doing this. And no one can buy me, you know, uh, no one can buy me, period. And, and my history proves for itself. I got, I was appointed the head of the largest innovation center by the prime minister of India when I was in India. After my Fulbright, I exposed corruption there. Most people would have sat there. You know, I went head on head against Monsanto, you know, you know, went against Elizabeth Warren. So you're looking at someone, someone like me is what you need. And the issue is, do you want that? Because in 2020, after that, I'm not going to run again. And Massachusetts is the center, the epicenter of the deep state. It's not Washington, D.C. All the scumbags come out of the one mile radius of out, of out of Harvard University. You know, if you go to Kendall Square where MIT is, you look around you, Facebook headquarters is there, Google is there, Monsanto is there, all the big pharma. So mm -hmm. I'm at the center of the deep state and I know how to fight them. So people really want to know, do they really want a warrior or do they want dumb shit politicians representing them? Because guys like me are one in a trillion, man. And I know that, again, with all humility. When you get to 55, you start realizing what you are in a very truthful way. And it's going to require someone like me to take on these people. And the real issue is do people, or do people really want liberation or do they want to be slaves? It's really about freedom or slavery. That's where we're at right now. Do you want to be a slave? Do you want to be taken advantage of these people or do you want someone like Shiva Ayaduri to represent you and fight for you? Because I have a history of fighting.